TikTok compilation that might wake you up and change your reality. Let's go! Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research, as these clips haven't been fact-checked. They might look like this, but in their presence, you will feel protected and a sense of peace. Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Cambodia, the plane ticket is expensive, but once you get there, you live like royalty on the cheap. Ten powerful psychological truths. One, silence is more powerful than trying to prove a point. Two, when trust is broken, sorry means nothing. Three, control your actions, learn to react less. Four, when you are honest, you lose people who don't deserve you. Five. One beautiful heart is worth more than 1,000 beautiful faces. Six, small circle, private life, clear mind, happy heart. Seven, never go back to somebody who you left. Eight, stop overthinking. You can't control everything. Just let it be. Nine, if somebody is stupid enough to walk away from you, be smart enough to let them go. Ten. True friends are very rare. If you have one, you're very lucky. So true. All of them, but unfortunately, we only learn this with age. China has not fought a war since 1979. They have an army that's not fought a war. The American military has a lot of experience fighting wars. I'm not saying this is a good thing. The United States is like a cocked pistol, right? Chinese military, they haven't fought a war in a long time, and they would have to launch an amphibious operation, which is one of the most difficult military operations possible. Right. On top of that, the Americans are going to defend Taiwan. Joe Biden has said this four separate times. We are going to defend Taiwan. The Chinese elites I've talked to over time, they know full well we are going to defend Taiwan. The Japanese are going to defend Taiwan with us. The Australians are going to defend Taiwan with us. So if the Chinese launch an amphibious operation to try to capture Taiwan, they're going to do that in the face of American, Japanese, and Australian resistance. And the Koreans. And the South Koreans in all likelihood will be there too. So I think that despite the fact that... USA was humiliated in Vietnam, Somalia, Yemen, and Afghanistan. The only time the USA won a war against the Soviet was in Rambo First Blood. Took me 23 years to notice this creepy detail in Shrek. At the beginning of the movie, we see the bear family among the fairy tale creatures. And later, we see only Papa Bear and his son crying. But wait, where's Mama Bear? Check the scene to find out. Lord Farquaad is really the worst villain. Why do they always hide insidious things in cartoons? The devil is not attacking you because you are weak. The devil is attacking you because you are a threat. Because there is something valuable inside you. Remember, thieves don't try to break into empty houses. The devil couldn't take you out, so he's trying to wear you out. So don't you ever give in because the tide is about to turn in your favor. 
God knows you're tired. He knows you're trying. Put him first. Trust him. He will make a way. Even when you aren't sure of the outcome, you can be sure of your God. Oh, I like that. He is with you. He is for you. And he is working all things together for your good. Amen. If you agree, comment, amen. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Denzel Washington. He's a great actor. I love all his movies. America doesn't want to hear your thoughts on Jesus. And, you know, keep that stuff at home. We couldn't say, oh, my God. We couldn't say JC. We couldn't say Jesus. My son, you know, I know. Yeah, we could say G's. Um, you could say G's, but not God, sus. Yes, yeah. unless you were praising him. And then you could say. I, yeah. Why? Issue with sin. It, 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 it makes wow. us, our sin that's in us makes us do those things. And the only, the only salvation for this sin is the gospel. The only way to really cure that was on the inside is understanding that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so, this, to me, on a micro level, it's understanding. It. Yep. It, just like that, we lost him. I um, and in second, I gotta thank uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this day means so much more than, than putting on this green jacket. In many ways. Uh-oh. Glitch happening. That's how you know that is the right belief. I, would, I won't say religion because what I have is relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus' name is nothing, why did they want to censor it? They don't do that to other beliefs. His name terrifies them. If you don't know, now you know. Twelve D Cinema is wild. Oh. He became everyone's emotional support kitty. I would pay extra for this accommodation. The ocean really is. For scale, here's a human. And here's a blue whale, the largest animal on Earth. Blue whales usually hunt at depths of around 330 feet. Deeper down, at 700 feet, the USS Triton became the first submarine to circumnavigate the Earth in 1960. At 831 feet, we reached the deepest free dive in recorded history. Down here, the pressure is 26 times greater than at the surface, which would crush most human lungs. 2,722 feet down is where the tip of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, would reach. Many animals down here can't see, like these eyeless shrimp at 7,500 feet who thrive near scalding hot underwater volcanoes. 9,816 feet is the deepest any mammal has been recorded swimming, the cuvier beaked whale. But not even the cuvier beaked whale could explore the RMS Titanic which rests at a staggering depth of 12,500 feet. At 20,000 feet is the Hadal Zone, an area designated for the ocean's deepest trenches, like the Mariana Trench. If you tipped Mount Everest into the Mariana Trench, its summit would reach down to 29,029 feet. That still doesn't compare to the two deepest crude missions in history. In 2012, director James Cameron descended to 35,756 feet for the Deep Sea Challenger mission. But Cameron didn't quite break the record, which was set by oceanographer Jacques Picard and Lieutenant Don Walsh in 1960. Picard and Walsh descended to the lowest point on Earth, Challenger Deep, at a record 35,797 feet below the surface. Since then, scientists have sent half a dozen unmanned submersibles to explore Challenger Deep, including Keiko, which collected over 350 species off the seafloor between 1995 and 2003. But scientists estimate there are potentially thousands of marine species we have yet to discover. Humans have explored an estimated 5 to 10 percent of Earth's ocean. The whale is the largest animal known to man. 
but the ocean is only 5% explored. Anything could be down there. Nothing like being unprepared. Radar is a thing. Explain what tensor rings are. You take a piece of metal and usually they use the Egyptian cubit length perhaps. It's not a random length, it's a specific length that has energetic properties. And you have a, two copper wires and you twist them at a 45 degree angle. So you attach that to the wall and you attach this to a drill, turn the drill on slowly, and then it twists the two wires together at a 45 degree angle. And then you bend it into a circle and you braze it shut, you weld it shut. People wear tensor rings on their wrist, single tensor rings. The fancy ones are they take two or three rings, lock them into each other, and then you can create different shapes by twisting them around and you just set them on the table and they give off good energy. It's like, it's another form of uh, creating energy like orgone generators. Let me know how you feel about this. You can see that. Look at that detail. And it's just remarkable when you start to look at the detail of these buildings. As I go through this book, there's a couple interesting things. Here is one. Look at this picture. These are people on a beach, right? And they have umbrellas, which is just weird. So let me just zoom in real close right there. They're on the beach and they have umbrellas and they're also wearing suits, which don't make any sense. And what's interesting about this picture is in this picture, if you can see all the way back there, see that boat, that huge boat? This is 1893, right? So we're in 1893, you got people on horse and wagon they got dirt roads, you know, they're supposedly going around on their buggies and, you know, riding around on their buggy farming and whatever nonsense that we've been told. And then you have ships that look like this. That doesn't seem to really fit the narrative, right? So 1893, right? So you got a battleship, which is just absolutely remarkable. It's actually called Battleship Illinois. So Honda was from the trap. He was a broke boy. He goes over to this auto shop because he loves cars and said, hey man, I really need a job. The manager said, I could tell. Honda said, hold on, not too much now. The manager says, don't worry, I'm going to give you a job, bro. Come here, let's go to the back. So he brings Honda to the back where he sees a kid. He says, this is your job. Honda said, hmm. The manager said, hmm, this is my son. You're going to take care of my son. That's your job. So Honda's taking care of the kid, but the auto shop starts getting really busy. The manager asks Honda to start working in the shop. Honda start working. Honda start grinding. The manager goes, hmm, you pretty good so the manager opens up a new branch lets honda run it honda's just a kid at this point though he like 21 nobody wants to go to him honda said that ain't no problem starts grinding putting in work building race cars race cars winning championship races they said get that boy moving honda said true hey i got some ideas though they said i slow down we already making a lot of money honda what you mean ideas honda said they said oh, speak up he said I'm gonna speak up at the bank, I'll quit. He said, man, we know you need the money, Honda, stop playing. He said, ah. So he stays with the company. But at night, he's working on something called a piston, something that goes inside of an engine. They're trash. He goes back to school to learn about metals. They're less trash. He sends a company called Toyota 50 Designs. They take three, throw away the rest. These three, though, make him enough money to quit his old company and form the company Honda. And the boy grinding, 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 getting to the money so his company turns out huge. But then World War II happens, which you think would be good for business, but all of his workers get drafted and the government assigns him to build stuff since he's basically a building genius at this point. And Toyota is supposed to supervise him building stuff so he doesn't own his company anymore. On top of all this, since he's basically building all this stuff, his factories become targets so his factories get wiped off the map and he's basically starting from scratch honda said hey 
Let's look at the bright side. They said, sir, he said, huh? They said, ah, the, a fact. Uh, he said, ha, ha, ha. They said, fine, you want me to talk? An earthquake hit, your last factory gone. He said, ha. They said, sorry, sir. He said, sorry for what? I already have a new idea. So remember, the country was just in a war. It's basically in ruin. So everyone needs to move things around fast. So Honda invents the first full-fledged motorcycle. He invents a bunch of different versions and the Super Cub is born becomes the biggest motorcycle company in the world. He said, bet, I wanna invent a car now. The Japanese government goes, no stupid, we already have Toyota, Nissan. We have Honda as the motorcycle people. We're basically taking over the world with this stuff, come on. His investors go, they right, man. We already making a lot of money doing motorcycles. Come on, man, Honda goes, y'all are right. They said, I don't think you mean that. He's like, y'all caught me, I never listened to y'all before. So he invents the Honda Civic, takes the world by storm again. Well, that's because he put something called a catalytic converter in his car, which was better for the environment. And some other stuff that saved the bunch on gas it was the best car and as they say the rest is history so if you're ever feeling stuck in life remember these words from honda although it felt like i failed over and over again my failures never happened for the same reason bro went from babysitting to owning one of the largest companies in the world if that ain't grind of the century i don't know what is you have a photo um, of the of the et yes et was about two feet from me three feet from me sort of very triangular head uh, about five and a half feet tall popped in we saw this red light come right into our circle and then a photograph taken and this et is standing right beside this man and he had permanent hearing loss since he was a teenager and he was fixed that night by this et that's a true story were you there yeah i was there mm. so we're dealing with civilizations that are you know a hundred thousand to a few million years ahead of us if people had known the truth about this 50 60 years ago we wouldn't be you know like in kindergarten still so that blackened area is sort of, of a bubble in space time and you can see the people on either side of him we just turned up the contrast very large head sort of triangular shape has a sort of a cloth tunic that's lit up He's holding some object, and this man right next to him to the left of how you're looking you know, had his hearing uh, healed. So I mean, you say, oh, this is a wacky story. It's a beautiful story. It just happened a couple years ago. Why no one ever has a perfect picture? Look at this amazing view over here. Let's zoom in a bit. I'm really curious about China's smaller town and cities. But this is really awesome though. It's a big drone. Does it include emergency uh, parachute? Would you try that, folks? Drop a comment, please. Don't go anywhere because we still have fire clips after fire clips back to back.
Only God knows the time and the hour. Focus on Christ, nothing else. This place in this country might just be found in the middle of the Arizona desert. This is Rodden Crater, and you're never going to believe what it looks like on the inside. It's an inactive volcano that an artist bought back in the 1970s, and it's designed to basically be like the pyramids before our modern times. There are 24 rooms in Rodden Crater, and each uniquely designed for stargazing. Just as it's theorized that ancient civilizations built structures in order to monitor or honor the sky, the rooms in Rodden Crater have been designed with the exact same concept in mind. It it has trippy tunnels like these that lead to rooms that only show specific parts of the sky. For example, one room might have the perfect view of a blood moon, while another is perfect for observing Saturn. The idea is that people would travel to Rodden Crater to observe meteor showers, comets, eclipses. But what about you? Would you want to visit Rodden Crater, or is it a bit too trippy for your preference? Get in the comments and let me know. No way. Add it to my bucket list. Anyone from Arizona here? People don't want to eat at McDonald's anymore just put out bad earnings. And one of the things it said is, is that it's starting to get less store traffic. It also says that it thinks this is true because people view its meals as too expensive. People used to go to McDonald's to get super cheap food, even if it wasn't good food and it wasn't good for you because it was too fat and had too many calories. But right now people are looking for someplace cheaper to go than McDonald's. I don't know where that would be, but people will probably find someplace. So when you think about McDonald's going to the future, they better find some cheaper food to sell. Otherwise they're in big trouble. For the price of McDonald's, you can get real food. Let me know how you feel about this. Is this ancient bread recipe proof of God's existence? In Ezekiel 4.9, it says, Take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and spelt. Put them in a storage jar and use them to make bread for yourself. This recipe gives all nine of the essential amino acids, forming a complete protein, which is what our body needs. But this next thing will blow your mind. This recipe is 2,500 years old. We didn't know about the science until recently, so how does the Bible know? It's because God made us and he cares about us and he wants us to follow his word. If you believe the Bible is real, then follow for more. The problem is our wheat is completely modified and it's not the natural wheat of 2,000 years ago, unfortunately. This thing has gone viral on TikTok. This family, they have travertine tile in their bathroom and they had one of their friends came over that was a dentist and he was in the bathroom and just glanced at the shower and he said, that's a jaw. <gasps> Human jaw? Caveman jaw with teeth in it, in this tile, in this bathroom. Oh what? my gosh. Wow. It's literally a human jaw. Yeah. Dude, what if that's like Peter's jaw or something? <laughs> it could be any, it could be <laughs> any. Oh, and it's from a uh, turkey. Ah! <laughs> hey, what was Peter known as? The bra. Oh, hey, Wayne? What's, what's the first two letters in his name? P. P. What do you do in the shower? P. Ah! We oh! Mr. President. We figured it out. Going so far, that this is the first I've heard about it. Have materials that we cannot replicate that appear to have been made somewhere else and and not just materials but craft and I, i've said it before and i've got no problem saying it to you again you can discard it as a belief but it, it's an informed belief that we do have vehicles and we do have materials that that we don't know who made them we don't know where they were from and importantly they're intelligently controlled yeah, yeah, this, this is not a matter of belief at either. The, these objects or these craft that just completely outpace what we have and have been doing so ever since we've had flight. That's the thing. It's been around for a while. These are under intelligent control. Now, who is the intelligence behind this? Is this an artificial intelligence like you'd see in a drone? Well, even drones have operators. So there is some entity behind this, you know, an intelligent entity. Now, people like to throw out these terms. I have no idea where UFOs are from. I have no idea, but there is an intelligence, probably beings that are behind these machines. Someone made them. They've, they've got to be factories. Demons, they are spirits and not physical. That's why they aren't affected by any of our physical laws. Say rebuild the periodic table. What do you mean specifically? This will not go well. It looks like a straight box, mm -hmm. but they don't show that hydrogen has the same tone as carbon. What's being shown here is a modified version of Walter Russell's Octaves of Matter. For those who don't know, Russell was an artist, mystic, and notably not a scientist, and he created this diagram in 1926. Now, we shouldn't dismiss ideas outright just because they originate outside of the scientific community, but this periodic table speaks for itself.
The reason why Mendeleev's periodic table is used is because it enables accurate predictions of chemical behavior and even allowed the prediction of the existence of elements that were only later found to exist. Not only have the octaves of matter not made any useful predictions, it actually predicts the existence of elements that don't exist. And that's when it's time to throw away an organizing principle. Same tone, same key of E, same key of E, 40.5 hertz, the next one would be like 81 hertz. Now onto the tone business. I've debunked his music of the element stuff before, it's video number 65 in my debunking playlist. The long and short of it is that if you selectively choose certain parts of the emission spectra of these elements, you can find tones that match what he's saying. But those are arbitrary choices that have nothing to do with the nature of the elements themselves. The actual frequencies in the emission spectra of these elements are orders of magnitude outside the audible range. It'd be like saying near-infrared is green because a thousand nanometer light, which is near-infrared, is twice 500 nanometer light, which is green. They're different things. It's take the angles of incidence or the tones that they create, you know, their color. Like you can turn color back into sound based upon it's the same wavelength, it's just twice as long or much longer. For those who don't know, an angle of incidence is the angle formed when two lines cross. It has nothing to do with color or sound or a periodic table, despite how much you might want that to be true. Now for the next 30 seconds or so, he continues on his acid fuel diap session about how if you just take the frequency of light and divide it by a power of 2, you get to the audible range. Except that's not special. You can always divide any number greater than 20 by some power of a number less than 10,000 and wind up with a number that falls in the audible range. So what? I had already seen this. This was all inside of that palace. I had access to it. This sounds like the kind of stuff that people seek help for. You'll see there's a relationship between hydrogen, carbon, silicon, cobalt, rhodium. They're all bonded. They are all sit be as the middle point between two noble gases. Are they really the middle point? Hydrogen is the first element. How is it the middle of anything? But yes, besides that, he's definitely observed something. It's not new, but okay. So those things don't really exist. It's only one substance. Well, that's a big claim that needs substantiation. In what way are they all the same? They have different chemical properties, different masses, different abundances in the universe. Sure, all atoms are made of the same stuff, protons, neutrons, and electrons, but that doesn't make all atoms the same. Chemically, we say that they're different things because in all chemical processes, these distinctly behaving atoms can't change into one another. On the other hand, if you're committed to saying that they're the same thing because they're made out of the same things, well then every element is the same thing. Under neither view do you get just that some elements are the same as others. Now the problem is, the first thing that we're able to perceive is hydrogen. That's the first visible element, because before it is too dense for us to perceive it. Hydrogen is the first element for the same reason one is the first whole number. The elements are sorted by the number of protons present in the atomic nucleus, and hydrogen has one. If you had no protons, it wouldn't be an element, as it wouldn't be an atom. It'd be something else, and be composed of something else. For that reason, it would be unreasonable to put it on a table where everything else is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And by the way, atomic theory isn't a theory in the everyday sense. We can see individual atoms now. They are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. This is a fact, no question about it the carbon octave, and they call that the a bisexual tone, because the carbon has two tones to it. It has a negative side and a positive side. The Only weirdos sexualize elements. By the way, the negative versus positive thing is giving misogyny. Fluorine and lithium naturally mate. If you have lithium bonded with any other element, the moment that fluorine is introduced, it will break all bonds violently so it can bond with fluorine. Funnily enough, this isn't special to lithium. Fluorine will basically react with anything and will react violently with any of the alkali metals. And the fact that I can say that highlights how useful Mendeleev's periodic table is. I can just make statements like that just by looking at the columns the elements are in. What actual predictions does your periodic table make that Mendeleev's doesn't? Terry, your periodic table isn't useful. Go back to acting. Getting kicked from Iron Man 2 sent Terrence to a downward spiral. You would never see this in America. It's about six o'clock right here in Manila in the Philippines, and we've got an outdoor dance and exercise yeah. class. Everybody's getting together, they're dancing to the music, they're working out in the state where I'm from, Minnesota. This would never, never happen. There would be a, a police presence, uh, there, there would probably be some sort of criminal element trying to disrupt things. The Philippines, it's a peaceful culture, it's a peaceful people. Ask yourself, in the city where you're from, the United States, are there, are there things like this going on? Because where I'm from, no, no, no. If you're late, we do this too in Indonesia. In the early morning, you'll see people dancing, exercising in the mall. So much fun. But still, don't leave your things around. Egg is cut off. You could still have the urge to scratch an itch even though there's nothing there. This sensation is called phantom limb, and some people even experience severe pain on their non existent limbs. Now, unfortunately, most amputees experience this strange phenomenon, and with no limb to itch or treat, these amputees are left with no good way to remedy the situation. Little way to say 
pain is an illusion. No. That's a movie set. They already debunked that. I don't believe anything here. Do you? This is the real reason we stopped exploring the ocean. This is why NASA stopped exploring the ocean. Explain it to me, terrifying. brother man. NASA first began exploring the deep sea in 1958, but completely stopped in 2014 for some unknown reason. They then started putting all of their efforts towards space exploration and trying to get us off this planet. People obviously began wondering as to why they made the sudden change, but no one had any clue. Well, that was until just a few days ago when a head engineer at NASA was fired and he decided to speak out about this. The man stated that despite the popular belief that only 5% of our ocean is explored, NASA in reality had 68% of our ocean mapped out. But this is when they stumbled upon something unusual. They have found an enormous cave opening near a region of Hawaii, which they have never seen before. The cave eventually led them to a ravine that was completely submerged underwater, and it was nearly 50% deeper than the Mariana Trench. NASA then developed submarines that were capable of submerging that deep, and they made wow. their way down. On their way down, they started seeing many strange creatures, which exist nowhere else on Earth. Just 30 minutes later, this is when they saw yet another massive cave. When the submarine pointed its flashlights inside the cave, a massive eye was staring directly into nope. their souls. It was the size of a house as the scientists stated, and they were all horrified. They immediately went back to the surface in fear. The engineer also shared some photos of this encounter. If you want to see it, comment view image. Walk I don't think they stopped exploring. I think they just stopped telling us. Away from anyone or anything that gives you bad vibes. There's no need to explain yourself. There's no need to feel bad about it. This is your life. Make more space for your peace and your happiness. There is no more room for negativity in your future. It seems hard at first, but really all you have to do is walk away. I was inside of a ship about 18 feet in diameter and uh, roughly 10 feet high to the domed ceiling. And there were three men on the ship besides the one that had got off and invited me aboard. You keep ca calling a man. What do you mean, man? Well, uh, Little green man? They were about five foot six. They came about to my eyebrows, and uh, they could have walked in our clothes down any of our streets, and we wouldn't have paid any attention to them. And uh, did you bring any proof off that ship? Were you alone in the ship? I was alone with the three men until the other fellow came up behind me and then the four of them were aboard. Were there any other earthly eyewitnesses to this? Nothing on the outside of the ship. And these people uh, stayed outside? On the airport. And did you go anywhere in this ship? Not to my knowledge. When I got off, it was the same place it was when I got on. Well, what do you mean, not your knowledge? Had the door closed when you went in or something? I don't know, because it was below the deck. And uh, w did these people tell you where they came from? They didn't say where they came from, but I've been in the air game since 1927, and their instruments were unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Well, don't give me technicalities. What was different? The difference was that we used dial instruments, and they used vertical instruments, like the fluorescent tubes with marks on them. What and color were these people? The instruments were marked in symbols similar to hieroglyphics. They were not in any language or number system we use on the air. Earth. What color were these people? They looked uh, like they were white people with a good healthy tan. Did they give you any indication of how old they were or what they ate or where they came from at all? After we got off the ship, the man who uh, invited me aboard, who didn't look a day over 28 years of age, told me that he was over 700 years of age in our time. Oh, come off it, George. That's right. Was this the guy who gave you the formula for the time machine? That's the man. 
And uh, what form did the formula take? Did he implant it in your mind by telepathy, or did he give you something written in he, English? He spoke it to me verbally. And you remembered this? There's nothing to it to remember. Will you tell me now? The Again, formula for a time machine. F equals 1 over T. F equals 1 over T. F being frequency and T being time. And this enables me to, to, to go back to the time of Caesar's armies uh, conquering Britain. Well, it would enable a mathematician to work this out, yes. And why hasn't this been acclaimed like Einstein's E equals MC squared? Well, why hasn't the fact that the United States government's been flying uh, anti-gravity ships since 1956 uh, been acclaimed? Or the fact that there's a crater on the moon with a base in it since 1954, we've known this. All right, but let's get, first of all, the U.S. Why haven't the FBI clapped you in communicado for breaking secrets so they want to keep secret in the United States? Well, possibly uh, because they know this information is going to get out eventually anyway, and uh, what I say won't make any difference. Now, you talked about a crater on the moon. Now, I thought all the moon stuff had been debunked and that nobody ever really knows what was on on the moon. What's this? Well, this is the Gassendi Crater. This is 55 miles long and uh, oval-shaped. It's in the Mare Humorum uh, Sea, or on the edge of it. Uh, since 35 years ago, they wondered why this particular crater had these lines in it. And with the magnification which you can get with the larger telescopes, this is what they found. These lines are tubes laying on the surface of this crater and running under some of the mountain ridges. There are three large dome-shaped structures in here. These tubes run clear outside of the crater. And we know there are tubes laying on the surface because the sun is shining from this angle and this mountain peak causes a shadow. But what does it all mean? Does it mean that this is a rocket launching or a flying saucer base on, on the moon? This has been a base on the moon for, for perhaps uh, many thousands of years, used by these people in the spaceships to resupply their ships or whatever is required. Let's talk about this picture. This, this picture, is the time machine. This is a picture of the uh, machine we're building down there. This structure is actually up. We're working now on the parts on the equipment that operate it. This rim around here has armatures 57 feet in diameter, which will be better than four times bigger than the biggest armatures ever made before. But is that the uh, place where you did the experiments? By the way, how old were these television programs you pulled back out of time and space? Well, uh, the oldest one was six years back because uh, the television was six years old when this was done. And what program was it? Do you remember? I don't remember what program, but I know that on checking up on some of the stations that ARC found that uh, the uh, station no longer existed. It was out of business. This is true. Joe Biden said he was there and fought the aliens by himself. Jesus is coming back to this earth. Not just soon. Not just very soon, but very, very soon. And I am here to ask you, are you ready to meet the Lord? The second time that Jesus comes to this earth, he's not coming in grace. He is coming to execute judgment upon mankind. If you want to make sure that you're ready, watch the video I linked below. Pep, 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 pep. Secret spells of the English language. It's very simple and recognizable. We awake each morning and go off it during the weekdays to earn our living at various jobs and undertakings until we come to the weekend. And everyone agrees that it, this is the way of things. Only more people die of heart failure between 6 and 10 a.m. Monday morning than any other time of the week. And I explained that when you translate that life sentence, you realize that a wake is a funeral party for the dead, and that mourning is the state we're in when we attend a wake. So when we exchange the friendly greeting with each other, good morning, on a subliminal level, we're also saying good grief. More people dies between 6 and 10 a.m. Monday morning of heart failure than any other time of the week. Everything is hidden in a plain sight. Words, signs, laws, it is in front of your eyes. If you want to understand it, to see how they enslaved us, this ebook will literally unveil for you everything you need to know. Age of belief is over. Age of knowing has begun. So what should I say then? Please let me know in the comment. All right, folks, I'm going to end our video with this coming clip. Be kind to each other. 
If you haven't subscribed, please do. And don't forget to like or dislike so I can make better content. Thank you for staying till the end. There's a free gift below if you like. Thank you for watching. Have a prosperous day. And God bless. What's the matter? I just found out my ex died this morning. Oh, Miranda. Yeah. I just wish I could have seen her one last time, you know. Say goodbye. Oh, come here. Come here. <laughs>